Lord Mayhair, page 709. The human mind is such that it makes a person adhere to his thoughts to the extent that even in the field of religion, each man thinks his is the best. The Parsis consider their religion the highest and call most other people Dorvand, untouchables. The Muslims are also in the same category. To them only Islam and Muhammad are true and all other people are kafirs, unbelievers. The Christians are no better. To them, Christ is the only savior of humanity and all other people, heathens. It is regrettable that the Colonel could not see me, else he would have had the lecture of his life. I would have given him a befitting reply, which would have driven out all the arrogance from his mind. However, his waiting for me for three hours, despite his undesirable criticism and bad intentions will not go in vain. He will be rewarded for his unintentional pilgrimage. He and the others will definitely be benefited. When he had been to Upasdi Maharaj at Sukhori, the bent of his mind being what it is, he was not even granted permission to taste a drop of water from that holy place and Maharaj would not meet him. He left mumbling all sorts of curses. The Colonel was actually a devout Zoroastrian. He had even written and published a booklet, The Excellence of Zoroastrianism, in which he extolled the virtue of Zoroaster's teachings, but castigated the priest class and the rituals and ceremonies they propagated. Rustam related, the Colonel especially criticized the activities in Meribad. He said that he had studied a great deal about Zoroaster's life, but he, that he was not impressed with the things he observed at Meribad. Baba replied, Zoroaster did in his time what he felt appropriate under the conditions then prevailing. Now I do what I think best and tell you to do certain things which I feel appropriate. If you wish to obey, do it. Otherwise, leave. I am not concerned if the world accepts it or not. Follow me if you like, or you can all go. What is it to me if your friends, relatives, or the whole world follow me or not? I am what I am. Scroll. Baba had previously foretold that the Parsis and Iranis would be the cause of his death, but this did not mean his physical death. The meaning concerned the bitter opposition to him and his work, which though none knew it at the time, was essential for his deeper purposes. Colonel Irani was to continue spreading the worst kind of false propaganda against Baba for almost 35 years. But this enmity and opposition was a medium for the master's inner work because many people came to know about Baba through the Colonel's articles. Although the information given was erroneous, it stirred curiosity in many people eventually inspiring them to meet Meher Baba for themselves. When they had his darshan, they were greeted with the sweet nectar of his loving presence. In many Iranis and Parsis, a firm faith in Meher Baba's divinity awakened, and they later became his staunch followers. So a great work was done through the colonel's opposition, and people eventually saw what beneficial results manifested. Viewed from this perspective, Colonel Irani unknowingly served Meher Baba tremendously. Baba even remarked about him, the Colonel is fortunate to be remembering me, no matter how. Meanwhile, Baba's mother too faced continuous ridicule and scorn by the Zoroastrian community in Pune. 
Wherever she went, she was treated with derision. And those of her friends and neighbors who admired her were silent in her defense out of fear that they too would be shunned by the close-knit community. Memo did not stay closeted inside, but would attend plays and concerts, which she greatly enjoyed. One Irani woman bribed one of Memo's neighbors and asked him to knock on her door late at night just to trouble her. Memo thought it was a drunk or a thief and took money to her sister-in-law Perosia's house. The footnote there said, according to Mani, Sheriar's sister Paroja returned to live in Iran, where she passed away in the early 1930s. Mani's sister-in-law, Parinmai, said Paroja never married. Balamasi's husband, Ferdon Masa, also passed away in the early 1930s after being paralyzed for a few years. Throughout India, one finds many sadhus or sannyasis who renounce the world and wander on pilgrimage, begging for alms. In reference to sannyas, which is renunciation of the ephemeral world, on the morning of 21st September 1926, Baba remarked, he who is a coward materially turns into a hero on the spiritual path. Perhaps you think that compared to materialism, renunciation is easy, but it is most difficult. Only those who want to die should decide on renunciation. External renunciation has no meaning. It must be internal. If there is no longing to renounce the self, there can be no love for God. <clears throat> Afterward, the Mandali reminisced about traveling in Gujarat with Baba a few years before, their previous journeys on foot and other tours. Some suggested another foot journey to let the new ones among them have the same experience. Baba mentioned that he would undertake another journey on the condition that no one carry any money and each maintain himself by begging. With all in agreement, it was decided to go on tour for seven days and to leave that very morning. The men were eager to begin, but Baba suddenly changed his mind and decided that instead of seven days, they would go out for only one day and return in the evening. The gong was struck at exactly 10 o'clock that morning, 21st September, and Baba chose 20 of the men and started on foot toward the village of Walki, a distance of six miles. Each one carried a sack for begging. The men were in good spirits and enjoyed the walk. The weather was perfect with a few scattered clouds. Striding along, Sarosh played a harmonica and others sang. The men on each side of Baba would lift him up while walking. On the way, Baba halted three or four times asking the men whether they should proceed or return to Meribad. The majority wished to go further, so they continued. On the outskirts of Walki, they stopped under a tree. Sailor and another man were sent to search for a cool place, a garden or an orchard in which to camp, and Kako Shahani was sent to order tea from a roadside stall. Near the village, a poor woman recognized Baba and came forward, came forward for darshan. Baba asked her to bring food if it was possible. The Mandali remembered what Baba had said, eat only what is had by begging. So several men went off to the village to beg. The villagers were suspicious and frightened at finding such unlikely looking beggars. Only the women and children were at home as their husbands were out working in the fields. Some gave them food, Others told them to leave the village and some were abusive. One old woman scolded Pendu and Syed Saheb who were hefty in physique. Earn your livelihood by hard work instead of begging from poor villagers. 
the ones who managed to beg for food, to beg food, brought it to Baba, who poured everything together and distributed the stew among the mandali, saving the leftovers. Within a short time, the villagers came to know who the beggars really were, and many came for Baba's darshan. Those who had refused to offer food to the master's disciples expressed regret at their misfortune for missing the opportunity when God in human form was at their very doorstep. The villagers of Walki persisted in bringing food to Baba. Thank you. One man invited Baba to his home and seeing his sincere love, Baba accepted. Tea was served and after talk, taking it, all returned to Merabad by 3.30 p.m. The remainder of the food was brought back with them and Baba distributed it to the Mandali who had stayed at Merabad. The Harijan children stayed at Merabad had been urged by Baba not to have any connection with Arangaon, but they did not listen and would visit their parents. Again, they broke Baba's order. And so they were expelled from the school. At a meeting in the evening, it was decided that those Harijans who were opposed to Baba and who were inciting others in the village should be forbidden to enter the boundaries of Merabad property. On the same day that Baba had gone to Walki, the Harijans had purposefully killed and eaten a bullock just to see what Baba would do. Next day, Shankar Vaskar, who had slaughtered the animal, was on his way on horseback to Ahmednagar. Just as he was galloping by the Meherabad hospital, he accidentally fell from his horse and was knocked unconscious. Several of the Mandali ran to help him while others went to inform Baba. Baba soon arrived at the scene and instructed the Mandali to take Vaskar to the hospital where he was comfortably kept and treated despite his known animosity. Previously, a middle-aged Hindu would come to visit Baba occasionally. His wife was seriously ill for years. The man had tried unsuccessfully to cure her by going on pilgrimage to different holy places in India and performing charities in her name. Baba assured him that not only would his wife recover, but also she would bear him a son. Months passed. At nine o'clock at night on 22nd September, the man unexpectedly arrived at Merabad carrying sweets and flowers. He smiled broadly and conveyed the news that a son was born to him. With tears of joy, he kissed Baba's feet in gratitude. After the man left, the master explained to the Mandali about the state after death. A person dies when his sanskaras are exhausted spent in full. After a person dies, his sanskara snapped the mind connection with the gross body. At that time, he receives such a shock that he forgets every incident of his past life. But even though the gross body drops, the mind and the subtle body remain full of sanskaras. For the next 40 to 70 hours after death, the attention of the sanskaras is centered mostly on the place where the body is kept. But after that, there is no connection whatsoever between the dead person and that place. Within the next eight to 10 days, the spirit of the dead person experiences the subtle state of either heaven or hell, according to his sanskaras, and then takes birth again. After a person dies, Many people perform rites and ceremonies for a long time, but all these are useless. It's a waste of money and energy. No ritual is necessary after 10 days. 
our work, the best right would be to feed either dogs or crows near the body because they have subtle sight and can see the spirit of the dead person. Crows and dogs are not subtle conscious, but they have subtle faculties of perception and draw toward themselves the sanskaras of dead people. Baba commented at that time that the best method for the disposal of the dead was burial. On 24th December, the Mahara Harijans in Aranga again caused disturbances. This time they hung pieces of animal flesh opposite the Opasni Serai and bathroom building. On inquiry, it was learned that some of the Mahar children who had previously stayed in Meherbad, notably a lame boy named Harinath was secretly causing the trouble. Before taking any action, Baba outlined in a meeting that night, the following four alternatives to be to the men Mandali and asked them to choose one. The rest of the Mahars in Mehrabad should be forced to leave. Second, the three or four ring leaders of the Mahars should be arrested and court proceedings should be brought against them for trespassing and willful destruction of property. Third, the two pat patals, headmen of the village who are living with the Mandali should be made to leave Mehrabad. Fourth, we should leave everything to God and remain passive observers with our fingers crossed. After the discussion, the Mandali un uh, unanimously approved the fourth course of action. Baba was pleased as he himself favored his choice, this choice. But Baba warned them to stick to their decision because it seemed that the illiterate villagers were burnt upon teasing and testing the Dev God as they referred to him. They may even go to the extent of throwing pieces of raw meat in our well, thereby polluting it for the Hindus. Baba observed and do other mischief, so be prepared to face and patiently submit to more disturbances, inconveniences, and provocations. Baba especially cautioned the Hindu Mandali to remain steadfast in the resolve in view of the decision taken. Even if the Mahars were to pollute the well, the Hindus should show their unconcern by continuing to use the water for drinking and cooking. When all this was settled, Baba issued the following three orders. First, none of the Mandali, especially the Mahars in the Mandali, should have anything to do with the Arang Arangao Harijans. If anyone is found committing a breach to, of this order, Baba should immediately be informed. Second, the headman of the village, Maruti Patel, should buy meat daily from Arangao and throw it to the dogs in Mehrabad. Money should be given to him for this purpose. Third, for one minute each day, everyone at Mehrabad should pray to God to grant good sense and better wisdom to Arangao Mahars. Baba then stated, had a yogi in my place and the Aranga villagers done what they have done, the yogi would certainly have killed half a dozen people with his occult powers. He would have struck terror in their hearts and made them desist from such wild actions. But a Sadhguru never does so. His ways are of kindness and conciliation. He pities such people instead of being angry with them in any way. To us, masters, all are equal. The villagers are on the same level with you. Baba related the following story to illustrate his point. A yogi residing near a village had many followers. People coming to him from long distances were amazed at his miraculous powers. His name spread far and wide and many people would stay with him 
in hope of material gain. A river flowed by the village and across it in a tiny hut lived a Sadhguru because he would not perform miracles, very few would visit the master. He would win people's hearts with love and direct them to tread the path to God. Over a period of time, the Sadhguru's following increased and the yogi felt jealous. I'm a bit lost. Yeah, he decided to defame the master in an attempt to turn people against him. One day he called a prostitute and told her, go and charm that old man living in the hut across the river. Make him drink and eat meat. Captivate him with your beauty and guile. Rosalie, can you take over? Thank you. Uh, show me where I am. The harlot. Okay. The harlot, being his follower, readily agreed to do as com commanded. In the evening, with wine and mutton, she went to the sadguru and said, Lord, give me a chance to serve you. I wish to sing before you to entertain you and to feed you. The Sadhguru knew everything and it was his game to agree. He was sitting with his disciples. The woman made him drink wine and eat meat as she sang and danced for him. And the whole time the Sadhguru smiled and laughed and pretended to be enjoying himself. The following day, the woman told the yogi everything and gathering his followers round him, the yogi in turn recapitulated what had happened. The yogi said that it was not good to have such a false saint near them as he agreed that he should be forced out. No as he would spoil the morality of the entire village. An angry mob formed and all agreed that he should be forced out. Thereupon, the yogi mounted his horse and with his followers began crossing the river. As they were crossing, his horse stopped in midstream and started to urinate. From the opposite bank of the river, the Sadhguru saw the yogi and called out, hey, what are you doing? Your horse is polluting the water of this river. The yogi laughed and replied, you old fool, do you think the river's water will become impure by the horse's urine? The master replied, if a little urine cannot pollute a river, how can an ocean be polluted by a little wine and a piece of meat? At that moment, the yogi was awakened. He understood his mistake and recognized the master to be perfect. He at once surrendered to him and dedicated himself to serving the master. And eventually all his followers did the same. Baba concluded, God is in everything, one and indivisible. All are equal in his sight. On Saturday, 25 December, September, 1926, Baba went up the hill at three o'clock and returned at seven in the evening. During the four hours, heavy rains poured down and the weather turned chilly. Owing to the men Mandali's indifference to his instructions to wear warm clothes during such weather, Baba issued a strict order that everyone should wear their warm coats all day and night. 
even while they slept. But later, when the Mandali sought his pardon, the order was withdrawn. The Brahmins among the Mandali had separate cooking arrangements and separate water facilities. They prevented anyone else from touching their drinking water. On the morning of 26 September, there was a decision among the other Mandali to make one arrangement for everyone's drinking water and do away with such distinctions. But the Brahmins were not ready to accept such a proposal. With the possibility of having only one water facility for all, the Brahmin students were prepared to return home. So Baba gathered all together and asked them to explain their points of view. A long argument followed and a vote was taken on whether to make the change or let things stand as they were. The vote was a tie, 28 votes for and 28 votes against the change. Everyone then turned to Baba and he cast the deciding vote in favor of the Orthodox Hindus to continue with separate arrangements. He stated, those who place obstacles in the way of the poor and destitute of other castes and compel them to go against their faith should not empathize only, oh wait, should not emphasize only the question of drinking water. It is not just a matter of drinking water. We should be on an equal footing in all respects, food, dress, religious beliefs, etc. If we really want to consider ourselves unprejudiced, all should eat together at one place without regard to caste, Brahmin, or untouchable. This issue should be banished once and for all. All should wear kafnis of gunny sack and do away with the external symbols of their respective religions. Let the Parsis give up their sadra kusti, the Hindus their janu, sacred thread, and the Muslims their beards. If you wish to bring about an improvement, it should be to complete in all respects. Oh, wait, I said that wrong. It should be complete in all respects. Otherwise, it is not good to take undue advantage of the helplessness of those poor people who have thrown themselves on our mercy. So for this reason, Forgo this experiment of change and let things continue as they are at present. To bring about the awareness of unity among all people is simply beyond human effort. It will come at its proper time by powers which are beyond humanity. Such a change can never be brought about through humanity's efforts. Age saw that Baba's beautiful exposition deepened the Hindu Mandali's understanding and the light of awareness of the oneness of God began to burn in their hearts. Later that day, Baba asked the Mandali to solve the following riddle. What does a God-realized person have in common with each of these? A materialist, an animal, an atheist, a child, and an idiot. Thank you. Renee, would you read next? Yes, okay. 
Thank you. Uh, next page, please. No one could guess the answer. So Barbara explained, there are two who do not care about religion, a materialist and a God-realized person. There are two who do not care about money, an animal and a God-realized person. <laughs> <laughs> there are two who do not worship God, an atheist and a God-realized person. <laughs> there are two who are free from lust, a child and a God-realized person. There are two who have no anger, an idiot and a God-realized person. Gee, Barbara, I'm not sure about the last one, but anyway. <laughs> On 29th September, a Hindu gentleman whose son had disappeared came to Baba and brought with him a printed handbill with his son's description. Though sincerely interested in finding the boy, he also wanted to test Baba. And he asked, where is my son and when will I find him? Baba replied, your son will be found tomorrow, and for that you should start for Sholapur immediately. When he was about to leave, Baba called him back and rebuked him. What do you take me for? If you take me as a saint, why is it necessary to ask questions? And if you take me as a fortune teller, where is my fee? The man admitted his wrong intention and Baba directed him to take darshan of Narayan Maharaj at Kedgaon. Baba also suggested that he inquire at the Christian missionary school there for his son, assuring him that he would soon locate the boy. Another person who had four sons once came to Baba with the same ill intent of testing him. He requested, please bless me with one child. A God-conscious master is all-knowing, but feigning ignorance of the man's four sons, Baba blessed him, remarking, you will have a son. The man bowed to Baba, giving the appearance of, be the appearance of being satisfied. Back in his village, however, he informed people that Meha Baba was a charlatan, and he described how he had fooled the Irani master. But within a few days, three of the man's sons died. He then realized the dire consequences of testing a Sadhguru and bitterly repented. He had asked Baba's blessing for one child and now only one remained alive. Later that night, beneath the stars, Baba served an unusually delicious meal under the light of, Petramax, of a Petramax lantern. The Mandali began talking about food and the conversation turned to the gluttony of the Brahmins of Benares. Baba reminisced about the time he had gone to Benares with the Pasni Maharaj in 1919 he narrated that no one except a Brahmin was allowed inside the sacred temple there and so before he could enter with Maharaj he had to change his clothes to disguise himself and wore a dhoti like a Brahmin. Um, so next thing. Inside the temple, Maharaj commanded the gathering of Brahmins to bow to Merwan and declared, He is Jagat Narayan, the Lord of the universe. Touch his feet. And the Brahmins did as Maharaj instructed. In late September, a mongoose and a deer were brought to Marabad and Baba assigned Sailor the duty of looking after them. It was not an easy job as the mongoose would run away and Sailor had to hunt for hours to find it. 
On 30th September, Baba humorously named the deer Dhadak, palpitation, and the mongoose Duajara, shivering, because of the trouble and the emotional stress the animals caused sailor. That day Baba narrated this story. A yogi once went before a Sadguru with a request to be shown something, such as God, the heavens or the plains. The Sadguru asked him to stay near him and take the name of Sitaram only for one hour. The yogi took this trial to be very trivial, thinking what possible great reward would such a small trial give. Although it is very difficult, practically impossible, to stay before a Sadguru even for a short time. Reading his mind, the sage said, I have a still easier course. Should you prefer, go sit under a tree for 12 years, observing strict fast, and I will show you what you want. This satisfied the yogi. He thought it would be a hard trial at least that would surely bring a good and substantial reward. The story, in short, means that it is very hard to stay with a saint who may be compared to fire. Not only this, but in spite of a strong determination in the beginning to stay at all costs, one would feel compelled to go away at the first available opportunity. If the Sadhguru turns the key internally, despite making an external show to keep one near. At noon on Friday, 1st October 1926, a special meeting of the Mandali was called, and for the first time, Baba hinted at ending the activities at Maribad. For his reasons may have been connected with his spiritual work, or he may have been giving the Mandali a warning to be more conscientious towards their duties. Baba was obviously irritated when he stated, I am fed up with the Mandali's moods, likes and dislikes, and with the long explanations that I have to write out. Baba then reprimanded Arjun, Veramji and Padri, accusing them of lack of enthusiasm in carrying out their work. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, would you like to read next? Sure. After, where are we? Sorry. After a long discussion, the Mandali made it clear to Baba that they wanted to stay in Maribad. So for the time being, the question of leaving was dropped. Baba later remarked about Maribad, this place is the most important one. It is the best place to be for those on the spiritual path. <clears throat> Despite visiting places for my work, it is always best to return here. At tea time, Baba focused on fear. Do not be afraid of anyone or anything and always do the right thing if your conscience accepts it. Do not be at all afraid of God. For if you are afraid of God, how will you be able to love him? Do not be afraid of your self, because the self is never independent of you. You are your self, Parameshwar. And hence, there is no use fearing it. But be afraid of the world and its personification, Maya. The material world is dependent upon desires. Desires of anger, lust, and greed. Fear these and keep yourself aloof from them as much as possible. Do not fear anything else. Do people actually fear God? No. They fear the threat of hell, where God will put them if their actions are not right. In the same way, do the boys fear Arjun or his cane? The cane, of course, 
not Arjun himself, for he actually plays with them at times and they willingly play with him. Two days later, Baba instructed the Mandali to remove everything from the Makan quarters by 10 o'clock a.m. and put it all in the sun to get rid of bed bugs and other pests. Pandava then disinfected the building. Their belongings, belongings remained outside all day and the area resumed a novel bazaar. At three in the afternoon, they moved everything back inside the Makan. In the course of a discussion among the Mandali on Thursday, 7 October, someone asked Baba, why did God create all this? He did not create it, Baba replied. It started automatically. First there was God and nothing else. In God was everything, experience, knowledge, power, and existence. But he had no consciousness that he was God. All this bother and headache you see around you is to gain that consciousness. In the afternoon, a small group of energetic and enthusiastic Sw Swaraj, Indian Independence Party, work, sorry, in the afternoon, a small group of energetic and enthusiastic Swaraji party workers, that's Indian Independence Party workers, arrived, including Shirvan Paranjapi, a celebrated journalist and freedom fighter. They were eager to elicit Baba's support for their cause. Baba explained, what is politics but fraud? Whatever your own honest, candid opinion might be, you have to act according to the creed of the party at times against the voice of your conscience and thus be dependent upon others for your actions, which is quite, op quite opposed to the fundamental principles of truth. One of the workers asked, will India attain Swaraj, self-rule, and if so, when? What do you mean by Swaraj, Baba asked. Political independence from Britain, replied the man. Baba wrote on his slate, if by Swaraj you mean the gaining of truth, that is already the property right of everyone, the spiritual independence. As for the political independence, no doubt India will gain it in the future. There is no need to worry about it. Political independence can be gained very easily, but the real spiritual independence is very hard to achieve. My advice to all is seek that truth which will give you everlasting bliss and real dhyan, knowledge, and thus be able to raise others too and save them from the entanglements of the world. Then Baba, then Baba predicted, within 10 years, India will enjoy extraordinary freedom. That evening from nine to midnight, the men staged a skit titled Selfish World. The actors were Rustam, Padri, Pindu, Mohan, and Syed. The play was followed by a few lectures and finally a dance performance by Pindu and Sailor. According to his previously announced schedule, Baba began fasting on Friday, 8 October 1926, and he started to curtail his activities at Maribad. He sat aloof at one spot near the school building, taking nothing except water the whole day. The next day, Baba continued his fast, taking only one cup of milk and water in the evening. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays were fixed for the Mandali to play, to play cricket, and Saturdays and Sundays were reserved for the boys to play. Baba now kept himself aloof from all these events and continued to remain near the school. That day, he was upset at finding the school notice board and timetable in an unclean condition. And he direct, directed Chanji to oversee the teachers, 
pupils and school activities on his behalf. Baba was in an irritable mood again the following morning, Sunday, 10 October. He had instructed the Mandali to put their mattresses in the sun every Sunday to rid them of bed bugs. But several of the men had been lax in carrying out his instructions, so he decided to punish them. Using a cane, he struck the hands of Baranji and, and those men who had failed to do as he had ordered. Afterward, those who received the caning complained that they had been punished unjustly since Baramji had failed to convey Baba's instructions to them. So Baba convened a meeting at 11 o'clock that morning issu issuing the statement. After this incident, the activities of Maribad will go on in the following manner. If any of the Mandali are found to be at the slightest fault, either in obeying me or carrying out their duties, besides giving them 10 strokes, I will also strike myself 10 times. Naturally, you would not like this. So keeping in mind the strictness required in following my orders, give your candid opinion about the following four proposals. One, either continue the Maribad activities by faithfully following my behest without any pretexts or excuses, or put a stop to the activities once and for all and bring an end to our stay here. Two, in case you do not agree to the above, would you agree to be with me for the next four months and work as hard as during the labor period of Gamela, work as hard as during the labor period of Gamela Yoga. Remember, you would be made to pass through very bitter experiences and you would get nothing from me except food and clothes as usual. Three, or as an alternative, would you prefer to go back to your homes and find some employment or resume your previous occupations? In that case, I might proceed to different foreign countries with a selected few. Four, or would you like, or would you accompany me on a journey by maintaining yourselves on begged food? Long discussion ensued. The Mandali entreated Baba to forgive their shortcomings and to let things continue as they were. Baba reemphasized, try to obey me and stick to me. I am tired of seeing my orders frequently disobeyed. It pains me. The Mandali agreed saying, we will try our best in following your orders and we are willing to accept any punishment inflicted for our errors and mistakes. Baba warned them, remember, you will have to face untold difficulties. Your heads and hearts will begin to whirl. It doesn't matter. We will try to control ourselves. We will stay with you no matter what happens. Thank you. Meher, could you read next? Yep, thanks. Okay. Little down, please, Muna. Little. Okay. Well, then the Baba concluded, I don't mind, he quoted an idiomatic Gujarati expression. Take care not to let your feet run away with you and make you leave Merabad. Votes were taken on uh, the four proposal. 22 men were in favor of going on a journey and uh, sat, uh, sustaining themselves by begging, the, uh, begging 17 supported. The second proposal of four months of uh, Gamela Yoga at Merabad, and only five preferred to return home and find jobs. When 44 Mandalis were asked to vote whether to continue as they were in Merabad or leave, the majority voted to say so. It was settled that everything should go on as before 
but baba was the opinion that because uh, because uh, one minute because he was keeping aloof from all activity in merabad for his own spiritual and also to see that his orders were being obeyed rustam beram ji and gassar ji were nominated for this position and a vote was taken rustam received 17 votes and beram ji and gassar ji had four each sorry i have to stop there's a call coming sorry can someone take uh mahu would you like to go next yes <clears throat> so i'm sorry from where should i read okay from rostam okay rostam was made head of all departments and given the title of bara sahib means big boss he was vested with full discretionary authority to make decisions in all matters and to faithfully carry out all rules and regulations laid down by baba despite the decisions agreed upon a second meeting was held at 2 o'clock that afternoon in which all were asked if they would prefer to travel either to shiraz in persia or rangoon in burma baba stated that he might visit other place either place with seven selected men but when a large number of the men expressed their desire to travel along their names were taken down 30 men were ready to accompany baba and when a vote was taken for where they would la- journey 20 favored shiraz and 10 rangoon but when asked again whether to remain in merabad or leave the men voted overwhelmingly to stay baba concluded <clears throat> let us at least wait for 10 days and see how matters progress under the new management the following day baba ate one meal while seated by the duni he gave some of the food as prasad to chanji <clears throat> baba asked chanji for his notes of his recent discourses and explanations which baba read corrected and returned to chanji 9 days later Chanji asked permission to type the notes and Baba allowed it. Page 722. Well, then Baba concluded, I don't mind. He quoted a idiomatic Gujarati expression Is take care not to let your feet run away with you and make you leave Merabad. Votes were taken on the four proposals. Twenty-two men were in favor of going on a journey and sustaining themselves by begging. Seventeen. supported the second proposal of four months of gamela yoga at merabad and only five preferred only five preferred to return home and find jobs mau just one second just wait one minute sure
please start from there. Oh yeah, okay. So afterwards, Baba, um, um, period, a cricket, um, period, a cricket match between the Mandali. That's umpired. Umpired. So the the day the page that we were reading it was a response to Chinese oh, request. Was that wrong? Read. Please read from me. We'll talk afterwards after the recording. Okay. After Baba umpired a cricket match between the Mandali. Up to this time, Baba would write his book of his book during the day at the box-like cabin inside Saidarbar, and at night he would continue writing in the table cabin. But on Tuesday, 12 October 1926, he again retired to the water reservoir on the hill for what he indicated would be a period of 100 days of a special work. The Mandali and his students took him there in a procession at 8.30 that evening. Bajans were sung and afterward tea was served. Baba stated that after a week, he would stop taking all food for 100 days. And as a result, he would, he would become very weak and be reduced to a skeleton. Quote, during the final period of my fasting, I will appear to be dead for 70 hours, close quote. He repeated, quote, but I will revive after that. Not only will I begin to eat, but I will speak as well. And with the breaking of my silence will come the manifestation of my internal work, which, which will turn the, the world upside down." Close quote. During 1926, the scarcity of water was a great problem in Mirabad due to, during, uh, due to the increasing number of people staying there and the lackluster rainfall that year. Rustam asked for and received Baba's permission to dig another well near the railway line. He brought in experts and water diviners to locate a suitable spot. The work began near the railway tracks but though they dug deep, no water was found. Concerning the problem of chronic water shortage in Merabad, Bob O'Reilly observed, quote, see the paradox and irony here. When outsiders come for my darshan, their desire are fulfilled by my blessings. They even find plenty of water in their wells by seeking my grace. But at Mirabad, all three wells are short of water. Footnote. The three wells were the original well near the road, <clears throat> Babul number one well at <clears throat> Lower Mirabad and Rustam's new well by the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Baba then cited the tale of perfect master Khaja Sahib Chisti of Ajmer, who sat under a tree for many years. Baba concluded, quote, that particular tree, that particular tree not only stopped bearing fruit, but after some time it withheld and died. Close quote. At that time, a farmer from a newly village 
came to Merabad, looking very dejected as he approached the master. When Baba asked the reason, the villager said, quote, I am a very poor man. I own a small piece of land, but cannot farm it due to the lack of water. I borrowed money to drill a well, but no water was found. And now I am in desperate straits. Thank you, Mahu. Jay, would you like to read next? Marvin, would you like to read next? Okay. <clears throat> what do you want, Baba asked. You are someone great. I have come to beg water of you. If I find water, my problem will be solved. I have full faith that you will grant me this boon. How deep did you go? 40 feet. Don't stop digging. Go five feet more. God is great. He will help you. The villager left satisfied with Baba's advice. Baba then remarked to the Mandali, today I committed a very serious mistake. I don't know how I did it. I asked that the man, I asked that man to go five feet more. And if he doesn't find water, what will happen? He will lose his faith in me and in God. Here you are digging and no water is found in my well. How then will he get water? I made a very serious mistake today. After a week, the same man, along with other villagers, arrived with all the paraphernalia for performing Baba's arti and puja. The man looked elated. When Baba asked the reason he was so happy, he replied, water has been found in my well by your grace. He performed arti and garlanded Baba. Afterwards, Baba distributed prasad to all the villagers, and they left singing his praises. After their departure, Baba remarked to the Mandali, Believe me, I am telling you the truth. I did nothing. It was the man's faith that brought water. <clears throat> this remark was too much for Rustam to bear. What about us, he asked. We are digging a well, but don't find water. Baba answered, I am God, and I asked you to dig a well for me. To have faith, there must be someone in whom I can put my faith. But I alone am. There is no one besides me. I know faith works, but there has to be someone in whom to put faith. And I have no one. That is why you don't find water. <laughs> Rustam said, <clears throat> but we have faith in you. So why don't we find water? I don't know about that, but this much I know. That villager found water because of his faith. I did not do anything for him. Baba repeated the same thing over and over again, and Rustam became irritated. It is useless for us to be with you, he argued. Obviously, you think we have no faith in you. <clears throat> we are with you day and night, but it seems you believe we lack faith. While a villager who shows up suddenly one day has enough faith to strike water. Next page coming. Baba silently chuckled and then explained. You don't understand. That man came for water. His faith was connected with water. Had he not found water, he would have told people, Mayor Baba asked me to dig five feet more, and I did, but I did not find water. <clears throat> it was a sheer waste of money, time, and energy to go to him. He deceived me. But here you are. Your faith is not connected with anything. Whether you find water or not, whether your desires are fulfilled or not, your faith remains the same. So your faith is connected with me and not with anything else. Therefore, I can trust you. I cannot trust that man who came only for water. How truly fortunate you are that I can trust you. But if you want to be like him, you will find water. 
decide whether you want water or you want me. Well, Mandali felt re reconciled with this explanation. Baba concluded, even if I started dancing naked before you, your faith in me would remain unshaken as you have accepted me as God. The villagers' faith, faith was based on an idol of hope and God fulfilled his hope as he felt pity for him. God feels pity for you also. So he makes mincemeat out of you. I have kept you here with me, not to satisfy your idol of hopes, but to break that idol into pieces. Since retiring up the hill in the west room of the water tank, Baba's new schedule was to come down to Lower Mirabad every afternoon and sit by the dhuni from where he could survey the activities going on. It was noticed that while walking up and down the hill, Bob would halt two or three times along the way and act in a distinct manner, sometimes staring at the ground, at times <clears throat> tracing patterns in the dirt or simply stopping and gazing into the distance as if his thoughts were far, far away. Age explains, <clears throat> Baba was the kutub, the pivot of the universe. So his every outer act was a reflection of his inner invisible spiritual working. The avatar takes on the responsibility of planning the destiny of the world. And with that responsibility comes universal suffering, which he must bear while he works on a universal scale for all beings. That suffering was visible during October of 1926, while Baba was resting at night. Thank you. Rene, would you like to read next? <clears throat> Adi Senior would be on watch with him for some hours, during which Baba would have Adi massage his legs. Once when Adi was on watch, he witnessed Baba silently weeping. Adi kept quiet as Baba wept, actually shedding tears, but he did not ask the reason. On another night when Adi was on duty, Baba gestured to him to stop pressing his legs, and Baba was suddenly overcome with pain. He was unable to sit or stand, and lay sprawled on the stone floor of the room, writhing in intense agony. Sweat broke out on his forehead and then his hands and feet turned cold. This went on for 20 minutes and the sight was almost unbearable for Adi to behold. He did not, not know what to do to console Baba. He wiped Baba's forehead and after a while Baba rested his head on Adi's lap and lay still. <clears throat> Later, Baba remarked, Today you have had ample evidence of what my universal suffering means. <clears throat> the 16th of October was the Hindu festival of Dasara. The day started inauspiciously when Baba called a meeting and dwell at length with mismanagement in the school. Baba cited some current irregularities, for example. There had been a free-for-all between some of the students recently because no one was present to control them. Baba urged Rustam to supervise the activity of Maribad as closely and thoroughly as he himself would do. He warned the Mandali, if I hear of such misbehaviour again, I will not wait for another meeting or conference before putting an end to all activities in Maribad. If you are tired or fed up, then say so and I will close down the hospital, school, Dharamshala, everything. Arjun, Vishnu and Gustaji came in for some direct questioning. Baba pardoned all but said with a serious expression this is the last time I am warning you. The students were given a holiday and played field hockey and Baba was bathed in the afternoon. Puja was performed and his arti was sung in Sai Darba. 
Jalbai took his photograph. Baba then went to the garden near his Jobdi. After picking some flowers, he returned to Sai Darbar and fashioned two garlands. He placed one garland on the photograph of Upasni Maharaj and the other on the photograph of Hazrat Babajan. He then took both photographs and put them on his gadi, which had been specially decorated for him. Thank you. Elizabeth, would you go next? Sure. Okay. Are we at a game of cricket? Is that where we are? Can't see the top of the page. Okay. He instructed that the Gadi be placed in his palanquin and taken in a procession in the evening. A game of cricket was played by the Mandali later on with Jal Jalbai and Rustam as the captains of the two teams. Baba played on both sides. In the evening, a long procession danced its way up Maribad Hill amidst music and singing. On the hill, puja was performed and Baba's arti was sung again. The Mandali in turn then carried Baba down the hill to Sai Darbar in a chair made by holding their hands together. Baba spent some time with the women in their quarters before retiring on the hill for the night at 9.30. A meeting of the circle committee was held and it was decided that Naval become Rustam's assistant superintendent. Ghani and Ramju arrived at Maribad the following day, Sunday, 17 October, 1926. Baba was informed that a rabid dog was spotted wandering around the property, about the property. He ordered that it should be poisoned, but added that precautions should be taken to make certain that no other dog or animal consume the poison. One evening, an old man showed up for Baba's darshan. It was evident that he was not well and Baba received him compassionately. When Baba inquired about his health, the man avoided the topic and only expressed his great joy at meeting the master. Baba arranged for his medical treatment, however, and kept him in Upasni Sarai for the night. When Baba went to see him three or four times during the night, Baba went to see him three or four times during the night. And the last time Baba went, it seemed as if the old man had been waiting for his arrival. Opening his eyes, he looked at Baba for a long time until he was satisfied. His eyes were full of tears as Baba placed his hand on his forehead. Moments later, the man breathed his last. He had come specially, he had specially come to see me, Baba remarked. His journey is now over. The next morning, Baba covered the body with his own sheet and the last rites were performed in his presence at Maribad. Baba helped lower the body into its grave, threw earth on it and then scattered flowers over it. On 18th October at five in the afternoon, Baba went with 14 of the Mandali to Bingar a suburb two miles outside Ahmednagar to give darshan. A large boisterous crowd had gathered and Nath Madav performed puja. This is not <clears throat> Nath Madav, the author from Bombay, who Baba had selected to write Upazdi Maharaja's biography in Marathi, but someone else, perhaps a priest from Bingar. The gathering was so large that there was a sudden rush to Darshan and the crowd became unmanageable despite the Mandali's efforts to maintain order. Excitement and confusion broke out, and in the disorder, Chanji and Arjun were lost in the crowd. 
Baba wanted to stay, but he was asked by the local authorities to leave as soon as possible to avoid people being crushed in a stampede. Some in the crowd had been celebrating privately. One inebriated man in particular was seen standing at a distance. For almost 20 minutes, the fellow stood saluting Baba in military fashion. It was only when Baba chanced to look in his direction and return his salute <laughs> that the man put down his hand. Baba smiled at him. Thus the master gave him a taste of the beloved's wine too. Back at Maribad, Baba wrote on his slate, quote, for all their faults and intemperate habits, I like these so-called lower caste Mahars and Mangs, as they have much more respect and humility compared to the so-called cultured yet proud and haughty upper class people. The depressed classes, whatever their faults, are humble and loving. It is their humility and devotion that appeals to me most, close quotes. The following afternoon at three o'clock, Baba rang the bell to summon the Mandali to the Makan and stated, quote, today each of you should ask me for something and I will do what the majority desires, end quote. All were given pieces of paper on which to write their requests. Then they were read out before Baba. Mohan wrote, Baba should break his silence today. Sailor requested, Baba should eat today. Baramji beseeched, Baba should forgive the Mandali for all their sins. Chanji wrote, Baba should give a discourse. Ramju wished, Baba should give each a cup of tea, a packet of pans, and a cigarette. Gandhi wrote, Baba should give us milk tea and a lavish meal immediately. Besides these requests, some men asked for money and others for employment, but the majority were simply in favor of something good to eat for a change. Baba wrote on his slate, this is the last day of my taking meals. As from tomorrow, 20th October, I will go on a fast for 100 days. And as the majority wishes for a treat and wants me to join them, I will consent on one condition, that you prepare the different dishes yourselves and have the food ready by eight o'clock tonight. Baba's decision was received with deafening cheering. The experienced cooks like Syed Sahab, Masaji, and Bomanji did most of the work, but the other members of the Mandali also formed groups to prepare different dishes. Thank you. So I guess, yeah, okay. Rosalie, would you like to read? Please unmute. Yes, I think I'll read. Thank you, Mona. Okay. It took, whoops, hopping, steady, steady as we go. It took three hours to cook the food and when everything was ready, was indeed a feast. Syed Saheb and company cooked rice, curry, and chutney. Bomanji and his helpers prepared pulao and bhagwan stew. Mohan and his group, bakris or chapatis. Masaji's group cooked spinach and sweet and sour vegetables while Kaka Shahani's family fry budjas. Ramju and Ghani fried chilies, but in the hurry, the chilies were burnt and had to be thrown out. After the chanting of sh shokas? Shokas. Sanskrit. Eh, come again. Shlokas. Oh, shlokas. Of course, of course. Sanskrit. 
poetry and the singing of bhajans. Baba served the food in Sai Darbar and all happily partook of the meal. Baba also ate with them and later between 9.30 and 10.30 p.m., the Mandali played Atya Patya in the moonlight. Coffee was prepared by Pesu and served to everyone. Baba retired at 11.30 to Maribad Hill. This was not the only time the Mandali had been permitted better fare at Maribad. Sometimes to give them a change, Baba would come in the mornings and announce Today, we will have a cooking contest between Masaji and Chowderi. For example, when Chowderi was cooking for the Hindu Mandali, each would work laboriously to outdo the other in preparing tasty vegetarian food. At lunch, the Mandali would serve as the panel of judges. Baba would dish out the food and ask whose food was more tasty. The food was so delicious. The Mandali would reply, well, it's hard to say. We will have to have a second helping to decide. According to Baba's wish, on Wednesday, 20th October, 1926, a new seat was made for him under the name tree. Baba explained, it will be difficult for me to continue going up and down the hill during the lat fast. And so it will be better for me to stay in Lower Maribad. By remaining at one place, I can also observe the activities going on here and attend to the complaints of those in charge. A circular had been issued the previous day stating that taking Baba's darshan was prohibited. The table cabin near the duni was shifted to a new spot, which required moving the nearby tailor shop and storeroom to make space for it. At four in the afternoon, Baba occupied his new seat. It was here that Baba finished writing his secret book. The book was thought to have been completed during the second stay in Sai Darbar. But a few more points were added during Baba's stay on Maribad Hill and the final material was completed inside the small table cabin. Thank you so much. And we shall end today's reading here. Uh, you can stay on if you want to discuss. Thank you, Jai Baba. Jai Baba.